Hi there, this is Larry Edelson for my Uncommon Wisdom video for Thursday, July 30th. Um, some action here, uh, some quick updates. I hope first, uh, very importantly, I hope you all followed my Uncommon Wisdom editorial column uh, of this past Monday where I recommended selling all Asian stocks, especially Chinese stocks, uh, that I had recommended previously. We had some pretty fat gains there, as much as 50, 55 percent uh, in just four months' time. I originally recommended them back in March, and I, I uh, suggested that China, uh, after a very, very strong run-up, uh, 100 percent since last November, some 80 percent since the first part of the year, uh, was way overdue for a correction. And today, uh, here in uh, Asia, we saw the market start to correct, especially the Shanghai Composite was down a whopping 7% today. Uh, that's the equivalent of about 560 points in the Dow. So uh, we nailed that one on the head. I hope you all followed my uh, editorial recommendations on Monday and grabbed your profits off the table. If you haven't, now is not the time to sell. We could see a little bit lower yet in China and then some stabilization. So don't panic and sell into the decline. Um, uh, and if you uh, are looking to buy uh, Chinese stocks, uh, wait for my signals on that. This is just a correction in China. Um, I expect to be back in there buying, but I don't uh, recommend buying at this point in time. Follow my Monday uh, morning column in Uncommon Wisdom for uh, any of my timing signals there. Meanwhile, we're also starting to see gold, uh, interestingly enough, uh, finally correct as I've been expecting. Uh, it did try to break through that 959 level that I suggested uh, was very stiff resistance in my writings and in, uh, uh, I believe I also cited it in last week's video update. Uh, it did hold the 959 level and has since in two days dropped about uh, $27. We're trading at 9.32 now. It looks like the correction that I've uh, been predicting in gold, uh, the sharp sell-off uh, on a short-term basis, uh, has finally started. It certainly had us um, uh, as a nail-biter there. Uh, it looked like gold was going to defy my short-term signals and explode to the upside. Uh, but right now, uh, it looks like it's backed off and it's uh, moving into a short-term downtrend, which could be uh, pretty sharp, uh, and uh, see gold uh, drop below $900, possibly even to the low 800s. So I hope you followed my uh, recommendations there and hedged up your core gold positions and your gold stocks. Gold stocks, as a matter of fact, got hammered yesterday. They were down about 6 or 7%. So uh, our timing there is right on the money. Uh, the uh, declining gold is taking a little bit longer than I expected, uh, but it's starting to unfold, and we're hedged. So that's great. Um, some of the other markets, the dollar's uh, trying to lift its head again. Uh, we're seeing uh, it's up about a half a percent today. Nothing major there, but I do expect a short-term rally in the dollar, um, and that's um, – uh, also why I was expecting, uh, you know, a, a decline in gold as well. So uh, we're seeing the dollar lift its head. I don't look uh, for the dollar to make any major progress on the upside. Uh, it's in a short-term tight trading range. It's going to rally. It's going to decline. It's going to rally. It's going to decline, uh, all within the confines of a long-term bear market that will eventually see much, much lower prices for the dollar, the dollar weakening against all major currencies, and as you know from my writings, eventually be replaced as a world's reserve currency. Uh, that's a couple of years away, but uh, the talk uh, and uh, the central banks of the world and the G7 and the G20 are certainly uh, uh, working towards that, and uh, don't kid yourselves, you're going to see it. China, uh, as we know, uh, is calling for the dollar to be replaced. Japan. Uh, has made some comments recently. India has joined the chorus uh, to replace the dollar uh, as the world's reserve currency. Russia is in there. Venezuela is in there. Uh, it's inevitable. You cannot be the world's uh, largest debtor nation uh, with a financial crisis such as we have now and still have uh, the world's reserve currency. Uh, trade, 
uh, capital flows all have to be balanced. That has to be inflated away, and the only way to do that is uh, through the eventual demise of the dollar. Uh, Bernanke knows this. Don't kid yourself. Don't listen to anything to the contrary. Uh, it's already happening, and um, it's probably the biggest event of your lifetime, uh, and certainly my lifetime, uh, and it's going to affect everything that we do and uh, everything that we trade and invest in over the next few years. So uh, make sure you stay in touch with my Uncommon Wisdom and my Real Wealth Reports, uh, where I uh, have that as a major, major topic, and um, uh, I'm always updating it. And uh, we're well ahead of the curve there uh, as far as everybody else goes. Uh, very few people really realize what's happening there. Uh, some of the other markets, the grains are uh, pulling back a little bit. They are, you know, tangible assets, natural resource, dollar-sensitive assets. So as the dollar uh, rallies a little bit, they pull back just like gold does. Oil got up to $68, $69. It's pulling back like gold, uh, back down to the $65 level. Um, nothing to worry about there. I believe that, you know, oil hit bottom back in March and, uh, we're going to see some backing and filling in the oil market, but oil should head higher for the next uh, 10 months, uh, reaching back to 95 probably $100 uh, uh, early next year. Um, lots of opportunities there on the long side of energy stocks, um, especially with the Dow uh, having gotten up to 9100 And if it closes above 9000 this Friday, July 31st, that would be a monthly buy signal on my systems for the Dow. It does not mean the bear market is over, uh, but it does mean that this rally has legs, as I suspected all along, and that we could uh, quite easily see 10,000 by late September, possibly, too early to say, uh, possibly even get up to 11 or 11,800 uh, late fall. I, I don't want to get uh, anybody too excited on that forecast just yet, one thing at a, one step at a time. So let's see how the Dow closes on Friday. Uh, just so you know, I'm looking at the 9,000 level on Friday, um, uh, and more specifically, 9,051. If the Dow can manage a closing above 9,051 this Friday, that would be a very, very good sign. It doesn't rule out a short-term correction, but it would be a very, very uh, positive sign for stocks. Uh, and the economy, uh, in the sense that it's at least taking a breather from uh, being so sickly and, and, and might uh, recover for a little bit uh, here. And I ho certainly hope so for the benefit of everybody. Uh, Till next week, this is uh, Larry. Have a good weekend. And uh, be sure to see my column on Monday. And uh, stay tuned to that column every Monday and my video updates on Thursday. Have a good weekend, Larry.